leaders who are introduced who are honored to be in continuous service of the society through such a profession where we could contribute our share in molding young minds and tender talents we at springfield are privileged to have and have been incorporating many international ideologies like the whole person approach including multiple intelligence thinking routines un sdgs and brain compatible learning brain compatible learning is a comprehensive system of adopting different modalities in teaching beyond classroom that is devised by none other than our esteemed director of education mrs anjum babu khan ma'am Nothing can be spreading across the globe and international outlook and a selfless and ever-ending service to the cause of education. Not taking too long, I would like to welcome our honourable guest, Miss Anjoy, ma'am, who has been so humble to have accepted our invitation on such a short notice to be a part of this webinar to motivate our young future leaders. Miss Roy has Thanks. been a citizen educationist for twenty-eight years. and a journalist before that she has a deep passion for english language she had held the position of head of the department english for many years and is presently working as the principal of sanskar world school she has great affection for children and feels uplifted in their company she is more of a friend to the students than a teacher she always believes in catching them young when it comes to talents of children she had been associated with dav Uh, Delhi and DPS International Schools in Saudi Arabia for many years. She had been training teachers throughout her career. She has been invited for talk shows regularly on Saudi Arabia radio. Her favorite poet is William Wordsworth, and favorite contemporary out author is Ruskin Barnes. Many of the students taught by her are successfully placed in print and live media as correspondents, editors, and uh, anchors. Mashallah. Be the best of whatever you are is her motto. Over to you, Anjum. Anjum, ma'am. Thank you so much. That was uh, I'm quite uh, honored and humbled by all the description. Once again, a very good morning to Madam Principal, dear teachers, and all my dear children. Today we have gathered all on this platform to celebrate a very important day, the International Literacy Day. literacy is so much entwined in our lives that we often fail to realize that the act of reading is a miracle that is in evolving under our fingertips so what is literacy we all are literate over here and we take it for granted so what is literacy what is the big hype about literacy that we have and others don't have the ability to read and write with understanding a short simple statement related to his her or her everyday life is literacy now in our times when we were students we it used to be called the three r's reading writing and arithmetic not only do you need to read and write but also need to count on your fingers how will you count your money in life otherwise now i would like to ask the students why do we celebrate the literacy day anybody feel uh, very uh, yes please yes children feel very relaxed this is like a classroom we are not in the middle of any webinar we are just meeting each other as friends as i say i love children i feel uplifted in their company am i audible yes ma'am uh, yes please so why do we celebrate the international literacy day we celebrate it every year on uh, 8th of september because of uh, unesco and uh, to highlight the importance of literacy and its importance okay so all of us over here very good and uh, Un uh, united nations is an organization which binds the whole uh, of the globe and that is why uh, literacy is not only uh, a problem in india am i audible thank you child thank you for your answer am i audible ma'am yes ma'am you are audible yeah. okay okay so now 
if we are all literate now what are the advantages of being literate we take it for granted we go to schools we come and teach we we, uh, we gather degrees so what is it that we are so fortunate about the first thing first is that literacy lifts a person out of poverty there are many people who are not as fortunate as us but do we remain like this all our lives bill gates says that if you are born poor it's not your fault but if you remain poor all your life then it's your fault the literacy empowers you to dream have you ever heard even the auto rickshaw walas their children are becoming ias officers so what was the motivation what was the drive what was the passion to study under street lights to study, study in candle light so what was the motivation there is this passion there is this drive to uplift yourselves to rise and shine you are still children you are blossoming buds you still have to open up to the opportunities and hardships of life have you heard of dr apj abdul kalam's childhood he used to sell newspapers he had a very hard life he was from a very uh, poor family but look what he went ahead and became a nuclear scientist not only a nuclear scientist contributing to the world but leading the nation the president of india have you ever heard of nelson mandela opra winfrey so many people today they are they are famous faces on the internet everyone talks about them but have you ever thought of the hardships they went through to become these so literacy empowers you to lift yourself out of poverty they say literacy is a bridge from misery to hope now can anybody tell me how does literacy empower the girl child anybody do you really think that women are weaker sections of the society yes children no be be very casual very casual very casual see women may be weaker in their physical constitution they may have smaller hands they may have lesser heights but their brains are equally intelligent give them an opportunity and they the creative potential that opens up am i audible is there any technical problem no ma'am okay so they become highly creative professionals i think 90% of your school teachers must be even the principal or uh, you know uh, the the director the pe the people who opened up the schools most of them you will see them going around in sarees and suits they all they all were girl children at one time given the right opportunity by their parents so you educate a man a man is educated you educate a girl child a whole generation is educated that is why have you ever heard of the word mother tongue why why don't we say father tongue because most of the time the children spend their uh, you know half of their lives in the company of their mothers and mothers have a huge influence on their life so if you educate a girl child then you educate a whole generation all right now i have a few Oh, so that I don't miss out on any point. Now, when you are educated, the infant mortality. So many children they die of malnutrition, diarrhea, especially in the African countries and all. If a mother is educated, she will be able to read the prescription, the medicine labels. She will know when to watch time and give the right medicine to the child. she will know how to follow the corona procedures to wash hands to use the sanitizer so even everything is related if you are educated your life span increases the people around you stay on for 70 to 75 years it promotes the overall economic growth a nation that is literate flourishes in every field scientific research health sector technology employment even every citizen is connected 
uh, you know a, an educated citizen contributes to the nation's growth family budget nowadays you see a lot of ads and all and you want to buy everything there's so much of consumerism anything there is there on the television or the internet you want to possess that now if you're not educated you will not be able to make the right choices you won't vote for the right people your family budget will go out of proportion and then the housing loans the bills the atm cards the credit cards how do you use all that if there was no literacy in you you were given the opportunities these are everyday words for you now can anybody tell me what are the problems you face if you are illiterate just put yourself in the shoes of an illiterate person anybody they will be not able to read and write yes then what will happen less job opportunities we'll get less job opportunities very good and we can't we will talk not english be able to get a nice job and earn money yes and no when you don't earn money then what is to do anything we can't go in foreign countries yes and you cannot connect to the world yes. isn't it yes and how about the right so you all people know people will call in the trade right so there will be no self confidence self esteem will be very low and yes. yes so for a minute i mean you are very fortunate and by god's grace everyone is sitting and listening we all in the webinar are literate so putting yourself in somebody else's shoes who is not literate feeling i mean how bad you feel isn't it now yes if you are illiterate almost all the doors in life are closed you are dependent on people even to read your own letters you know even if a mail comes you won't be able to read it you'll uh, go after somebody beg after somebody to go and read it then have you seen uh, you know if you're not uh, you are not you don't know anything about health and hygiene if you're illiterate have you seen uh, the beggars how they are uh, carrying their small children in their laps in traffic pollution yes. and yes. don't you feel how much of uh carbon monoxide goes into that child's nose the yes. child is sleeping yes, and then yes. and then the laborers children who are uh, you know roaming around in the construction sites even yes. a brick or anything can fall on them do the yes. parents have the literacy to understand this that how they are no. putting their li children's lives in danger so no. literacy is very important for the survival itself if you don't know the traffic rules you may be just running and get run over by a bus you tra taught traffic rules in grade 1 isn't it yes 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 so the very existence in today's world yes at one time the early man was there he used to if he was hungry he would pick fruit from the apple tree he would eat if he if he would feel like uh, he would feel uh, you know hot he would jump into a river and uh, swim and feel cold but today the times are different the world has changed and for that we have to equip ourselves with literacy that doesn't mean gathering degrees but yes awareness okay now what are the causes of illiteracy why do i mean why are people illiterate why is it that a man is going you know swishing past in a mercedes and on the other side under the traffic light there is a beggar standing why do you think there is illiteracy and poverty because they don't have money and their okay. parents won't allow yes and do you think they are illiterate they won't get any job and all right so it's a isn't it a vicious cycle that you are poor you can't go to school and because you don't go to school you again remain poor yes isn't it yes and yes right so we think of when we we just think of cities when we think of poverty the urban poverty but why don't children go to school in the rural areas mom i guess because their uh, parents make them farm and do the child labor okay. work 
Right. because school is not nearby to the village yeah very good yeah. and their parents so, are not having enough money to send them so to school right think we are sitting very fortunate uh, to be you know you are in hyderabad i'm sitting here in uh, delhi so yes. we are very fortunate we have everything we have a planned city but think of the children in deserts the high mountains where the temperatures are very harsh do you think they will be able to climb uh, you know the hills or they will be crossing the lakes and the bridges to go to a school which is several miles away so this is one reason where accessibility the schools are not very nearby or children don't have books they don't know how the next meal of the day will come then why bother about studying first they have to eat and breathe first their own survival yeah. then only they'll be able to study and then yes. after studying also employment problem do we have employment for everyone there's still it's a huge problem right because yes. the population is increasing it's at such a rate we are already more than 7 billion on this earth and how fortunate we are that you and i are sitting here talking to each other isn't it what do you say yes. Yes. Uh, it's not it's not That's coincidence it. it's not yes. coincidence otherwise yes. who meets who in the whole of planet it's very fortunate that we are meeting here and talking about yes. it isn't it so yes. some good outcome has to come out of this webinar now there is no surety of employment now the people who are illiterate they feel that we spent our whole lives being illiterate there was not much of a problem so why send our schools uh, children to schools you know let the illiteracy yeah. go on i mean who will take the initiative so mm. that drive there is a hopelessness there is a defeat in the hearts that let life go on as such doesn't matter you know we have to lift people out of that now another thing a very special thing about girl child is that they feel that anyway even after gathering degrees and all she'll get married and she has to roll chapatis and feed her husband and her mother in law isn't it so why yeah. to why to educate a girl child okay she ultimately has to bear babies and has to prepare for the meals for the this thing but as i told you that they may be physically weak but their brains are very intelligent we have presidents and prime ministers as females so why not give equal, equal opportunities to both the genders yes ma'am have you have yes. you watched the movie have you watched the movie dangal yes ma'am yes, ma yes. how the father gives yes, the opportunity yes. isn't it so that yes, should be yes. the passion that should be the kind of upbringing then there is one more thing which is both common to rural areas and uh, urban areas that is learning disability disabilities dyslexia or short uh, you know the attention span is short so they feel that uh, there is no uh, remedy for this why waste time you know so there are always a recourse into the smartphones and uh, let's go and play and things like that awareness there is a lack of awareness you understand awareness yes. that everyone doesn't know yes, you you are studying it yes. i am teaching it we know it but general public doesn't know right okay, okay. one minute please okay can anyone suggest me the solutions for this problem ma'am there should be equal rules for every single gender and there should be not like if a woman is weak we should like uh, treat them like in not in a wrong way we should treat them equally like if uh, a man is laying hand on a woman and if it's you know getting like beaten up there so you should not you know support the the man to yes do what she did it wrong we should be equal and we should not you know every time the be right for the men and not for the women very good because in very india good. there is uh, hmm. yes yes children uh, we Tell follow me. caste system yes uh, that's yes. why dalits don't get any uh, high professional jobs exactly and uh, yes. so i yes child parents should understand the importance of education in a child's life whether he is a whether the child is a girl or a boy 
girl or a boy and it is so ironical that in india on one hand we are uh, you know worshiping uh, the female deities as devis and on yeah. the other hand a child is going and wa washing dishes in somebody's house right so why is it this big gap so one thing is we can start with free education which already the government is doing anybody can tell me about the government's uh, initiatives in this uh, uh, field uh, in this uh, how are they helping the children to study to study beta bachao beta bachao beta and free and meals for uh, yeah mm. and for dalit they have started a new scheme okay then uh, there are grants for uh, you know uh, intelligent children that they can do research and then they are spreading awareness campaigns digitalization is there you know what uh, you, uh, if uh, especially in this pandemic and all i'll come to that later now uh, have you ever thought about why these uh, doc, um, mbbs colleges and these engineering colleges are so expensive the these doctors and the engineers they are they contribute so much we wouldn't be sitting in these huge buildings and we wouldn't have these big hospitals if there were no doctors or engineers but when a child has to get into these colleges and these uh, you know institutes it is so expensive that the parents giving give up before uh, you know thinking so so don't you think that we should raise awareness about uh, you know education being lesser expensive yes. every uh, you know the government colleges should there should be more of government colleges where yes. all the children are welcome given mm -hmm. opportunities isn't it yes yes ma'am there should be like uh, entrance exam for the people who can't pay the fees uh, so they can even study if they don't have money you know they should uh, come out with a scheme like that and exactly. ma'am there should be more government schools and colleges rather than private exactly exactly so now in this where does the whole topic of today's uh, webinar is that what is the role of educators and you people the learners in spreading literacy now who are these educators your own teachers right yes yes now yes. you i feel yes. i have been i have been a teacher for many many years till last year i had been taking classes i feel teaching is not a profession i call all the educators missionary they have a mission in life if we yeah. have entered this field are the teachers there are any teachers sitting there yes ma'am they have joined yes so, yes so i feel that teaching is a responsibility yes we do get salaries at the end of the month but there is a lot of sacrifice there is a lot of multitasking which goes into this uh you know profession i don't call this a profession at all i feel, i feel very bad if anybody calls teaching a profession it is a mission it is a mission if you have once entered this field there is no looking back right so yes now first thing a teacher has to update herself all the time she has to multitask on one hand there is now this pandemic is another big uh, you know uh, it has uh, it is a challenge actually that we have to reach out to all the children in the class the wifi is not working sometimes the children uh, there are not too many smartphones in the house the laptops are not there hundreds of problems are there so in beating all these challenges one has to rise up and you know it is a responsibility that after 365 days of learning there has to be some change in the child a child who is passing out of the 6th grade has to enter the 7th grade or the 8th grade there must be some more knowledge in that child more skills so learning yourself is a very easy thing but drilling it in somebody's head and putting pouring in the knowledge is very difficult believe me now so this is one thing teachers a lot have been told about teachers uh, this thing now what have they been doing uh, in the villages is that uh, villagers they don't uh, the children they don't have personal smartphones or anything so there is this yes. broadcast you know there is this uh, loudspeaker some teachers uh, rural uh, teachers uh, area teachers what they've done they have uh, put up a loudspeaker you know on a pole and children are sitting at a safe distance separately and the broadcast is going on 
either a kind of a radio broadcast or a loudspeaker broadcast mm -hmm. so that the children can at least listen right because mm -hmm. see even now it's not completely over we still have cases and yes. there are there is a fear though i always say that don't give in to fear just keep your immunity high don't give in to fear these many cases negative news media this that just have a lot of confidence in your own being as a person that i'm the healthiest person in the world no disease can touch me and i'm going to achieve all the goals in my life nobody in my family is going to get sick we are healthy people and we are going to follow the precautions yes it is there we are not going to infect anybody but it's not going to hamper our living by the time you are very special children you belong to a very sp uh, you know you are going undergoing very unique strange times you will be called survivors you will be called warriors when you pass out of this thing you know after years back when you look back you will be telling your children and grandchildren we are survivors like rem remember the uh, the hiroshima and nagasaki so we yes. are also yes. survivors now have you ever wondered now what is your uh, role as learners please tell me now what are you doing about literacy mom i think it's our role to study more and also share the knowledge which we are achieving every day and right. uh, so role as a learner is we should uh, listen to our teacher complete all the assignments on time and all okay wonderful that's being a very nice student and uh, you taking care of your studies now how will you spread literacy uh, how is your school we should you open... yourself promoting hmm. Don't we should open it. free tuitions okay and uh, anything else uh, what kind of programs are you following in your school to promote literacy do you have any literacy week in your school yes and your siblings so anybody can elaborate on each one teach one what have you done in that anybody uh, we can teach our neighbors or our maid children very like good that. siblings so, so who has done it out of you mom i have okay so did you see any change yes ma'am yes. there was like uh, two little uh, uh, child they were like uh, the uh, you know for education centers for education for children and spread literacy very good so uh, suppose you want to educate your uh, maid maid servant at home so what will you teach Important. First, we will uh, learn basics. Okay, but that you have already learned. Don't first you think first manners. thing first uh, manners? First thing first, teach them to write their name. Yeah. They don't know how to write their names. Yes. Teach them to count up to one hundred, and yes. then you can go on to tell them about how to open up a bank account, how to manage yes. their money, count their money. keep it safe and what are you know what is the right to education and uh, you know all kinds of fundamental rights that yeah. they have the right to equality why uh, you know uh, so, sometimes uh, you know they poor people they suddenly stand up and they salute you and all that what is the difference between you and them they are also uh, the creation of yeah. god yeah they are humans they are the beautiful creation of god everyone is a soul behind isn't it so why this discrimination okay never have, always be humble always be humble that's the first thing be a very very humble human being okay when you see such people don't look upon look upon their torn clothes or they are not able to pronounce things properly you know so tell tell them stop them and tell them no no it is not like this okay say it like this so you stop them and tell them okay like if anybody says tum school ja rahe ho to don't say it is school okay say it's school okay but sometimes so, they will find no that's a way of approach if you keep a hand on their shoulder and say that i am like your sister or brother and uh, can i correct you on this point and then you say it yeah. okay be a yes. very loving person 
no airs, no attitude. I am in the best school. I am rich. Nothing, nothing, nothing matters. Okay, yes. so the whole point is that you have to be globally aware. Now, it has this pandemic has given you a lot of time for soul search. Then why was I born? Why am I here? What am I going to do for next 70, 75 years? Am I just going to look into the smartphones and play games and uh, you know uh, and just chat and you know spoil my health? What kind of a human being am I uh, you know uh, becoming? There's a lot of time for for soul search. Now, very uh, this is a time when the family bonding is there. You know, it is not. It used to be very rare that everyone used to be in the same under the same roof. Either father is going on on a trip to a official to a or mother has some serious. You know, uh, your siblings are doing their homework. People used to be in their own uh, you know rooms and doing this, but this is a time when everyone is thrown together. So you are dining together, you have, you're having your meals together, you're discussing over things, a lot of grudges are coming out and a lot of discussions are being held in the family and a lot of churning processes there, isn't it? Am I wrong? Is it happening in no. your homes? No. No. So a lot of experiential learning, you know, you uh, in last few months, you were not able to go out somewhere. So you would just go to your courtyard or your balcony and run a hand on a green leaf and feel, wow, what nature. You started noticing the rainbows, the rising sun, because you were jailed inside your houses. You had nowhere to see. And it, there is a joke also, you know, uh, that for a while the Wi-Fi went off and um, I met my family. Yes. They're not, uh, yeah, kafi achhe log hai, bure log nahi hai, you know. So yes. first time you had the time to meet your family properly, you know. When was the last yes. that you hugged your sibling? When was the last that you pressed your mother's legs? Uh, Mommy, are you tired? Shall I help you in the kitchen? So be very empathetic. Okay, these are the times when soul search has to come out. You may be children, you are very delicate, you have very few, uh, you know, am I boring you? No. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, no ma'am. No. I hope nobody's, I, I hope nobody, I hope nobody's yawning there. No. So uh, people have kept <laughs> people have kept pets. You know what I did? I grew sprouts. I said we have to fight this. Uh, you know pandemic. Let's have some healthy food. So I grew some sprouts. I did some painting. What would you? How would you pass your 24 hours inside a house? Then I would catch up all on my childhood friends. You know video calling. How are you? Whom with whom yes. I studied in kindergarten? You know. I in kindergarten. Today I'm 53 years old. Imagine the kindergarten. It was early man's times. Imagine. So I would catch, I would catch up, uh, you know, all with all these people and ask them. And then I would catch up with all the old relatives and ask them what medicines they are taking. Uh, do you want something? Can I help you with something? You know, and a lot of uh, uh, relationships developed in this pandemic times. So have a lot of global empathy. Don't think I, my India, my nation, that's fine. We are very proud. But then there are people beyond the borders who are suffering, right? Yes. So have a lot of empathy for yes. every child born on, it, on this earth, every person who is poor, every person who is sick or handicapped. Okay, so we have to start with literacy. What we can do, you, you're very small children. You can only manage with a, a few campaigns, slogans and posters, yes, posters. and making people aware, isn't yes. it? Yeah, so what else yes. do you do? Tell me. Anybody who is yes. very good at art and painting? I'm sure you must be. I'm good at drawing. Yes, sure. yes. yes. I, I actually. Very good, very good. So you have been participating in all the Literacy Week posters and all these things? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, anybody would tell me like, uh, yes, please. Anybody wants to say anything? Uh, yes, because I'm uh, working, I'm, I'm communicating through my phone. The screen is very small. I'm not mm -hmm. able to see you individually. But uh, tell me, I mean, uh, what all have you been doing? Ma'am, I, ma'am, I was having my old notebooks, and there was some child, the people near my house, small children. So I gave them my uh, books, and I buy some 
pencil erasers and gave them. They were so happy and they were thanking me a lot that uh, you have helped me a lot. We couldn't afford this much and all. That's so sweet of you. Such a noble child. You're a very blessed child and I'm sure others are also doing. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Even our school organized uh, one event where we all uh, girls and boys contributed a lot of stationery to uh, government schools and poor childs notebooks stationery very nice very nice there is somebody i i'm sure uh, you have a very uh, spiritually evolved leadership in your principal ma'am who is uh, guiding you all to do all these things and you're very yes. fortunate to be in the school isn't it yes, yes. so ma'am yes. so Yes, children, please tell me what you all have been doing. I have been talking a lot. So tell me uh, what all uh, have you been doing to know you better. Next time when I come to your uh, the thing, I'll bring some nice PowerPoint presentation also. Yes, tell me. Children. Anybody else or even a teacher? Anybody? Anybody? actually even except the stationery we should even also love and care for the children like you can even explain how yeah very uh, like nice and what actually literacy is and telling its importance very true very true that's the that is the root thought even behind the stationery there is love behind there is caring behind isn't it we have to be very empathetic individuals when you grow up be very empathetic to such people you know you are still very young yes. when you grow up have a lot of kindness in your heart a kind human being is respected like anything everyone if you are a kind person anybody will jump to help you in any kind of trouble you are isn't it yes yes so yes ma'am that's true yes ma'am isn't it so uh, i think that don't worry about only my life my ambition my bank balance my huge villa my family go beyond that okay if we Spread. share to yeah. them we will get more exactly exactly everything comes back everything comes back good deeds yes. always come back and then it is such a proud moment for your parents they will say wow what a child god has blessed us with isn't it yes Yes, ma'am. And yes, just ma parents, if you even do something good, yes. so from heart you feel good by doing that. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, uh, I keep telling uh, the parents also who come to me that uh, don't uh, just uh, you know uh, tell your children. that uh, you know we are not educating you people just to gather money in life you have to be complete individuals see to it that you have relaxing time yes. you do some gardening you some listen to music on sundays uh, the fathers play cricket with children what a wonderful yes. father and then you get time to go to temples and mosques and meet your neighbors say a hello or uh, go and walk into their house and uh, shake hands with the, them and say a uh, happy birthday to them don't wish yes. them through just small messages so keep a, uh, what was the earlier uh, you know how did the earlier people live because there yes. was a lot of hum, human contact and there were hum, beautiful human relationships but today everything has come into this rectangular box that we are yes. so lazy so once again uh, you know when the pandemic is over go out into the world spread your light spread your radiance rise and shine and also uplift others so when you look back in your life you will see oh my god what a beautiful life i've lived it's not about yes. all me i me and myself isn't it yes, yes ma'am and it's another like thing we want to yes child tell me we want to like uh, after we grow up, we miss our childhood days like with our friends while we play in the school and all it's like we want to relive that moments and all we will feel absolutely happy. Definitely. you know what and never let the child when even when you grow up never let the child inside you die you know I, uh, today i'm so old but uh, my heart is still like a 14 year old till la last 2 3 years back you know i i was in saudi for many years and uh, i just came back a year back and uh, so i would come to india and whenever i would go to a boutique or a tailor you know all these uh, you, uh, you know small pieces of cloth are lying on the floor you you have seen that yes. the extra cloth which has been cut down so i used to gather that and i would take it to saudi arabia and i would stitch uh, dresses for my daughter's doll 
i would make a lehenga i would make dupatta and uh, you know uh, and uh, the child in me would never die so always keep up these small small uh, you know uh, things in your heart you go into the you know you you go to the playground you remove your shoes and your chappals and uh, rub your feet on the grass wet grass what a feeling you know what a yeah. smell then uh, when my children were small we would get mud from the park and we would make sm small mud sofa sets yeah. and we would dry them and then paint them so uh, you know at any age don't ever grow up even now when i go for a uh, in, you know night walks or evening walks when the children get down from the swings i go and take a nice swing you know uh, on the this thing and i feel so uplifted mm -hmm. how wonderful i go back to my childhood and i feel more uh, you know closer to children talking to them because they are very high energy children when uh, you talk yes. to an adult the, the adult is always tired of his life oh my god i have a job i have to cook my meals i have to wash i have i don't okay. uh, you know and people of my age my friends they are always complaining of i have a pain in my knee you know my shoulder has frozen i have a migraine problem i have mm -hmm. a spinal problem i i run out of the room you know i take a u turn and run and <laughs> i talk to i talk to small children i go into their world what do they do wow i enjoy in their small pleasures you know we should live our life to less absolutely and when i uh, used to you know my uh, when uh, my children we would have chocolates at home and i love chocolate so much we would uh, when the last piece of chocolate would be left you know everyone would we would cut the chocolate with a scale with a scale mm -hmm. and then have small small pieces out of the last bite that yes. everyone is going to have this chocolate so that kind of you know uh, a bubbling energy should remain there all your life the childish yes. energy don't ever grow it's, up we uh, feel negative and say it's exactly. and all childhood memories not good exactly childhood should never stop you know yeah. childhood yeah. should always be there that is how childhood you would be is able to... not having the age exactly age is just a number age is just yeah. a number isn't it so uh, be very very high energy children don't think negative don't see anything negative and be very yeah. calm at all situations try to help others and have small pleasures of life okay be yes. in nature take nature walks get out of the house as much as possible once the pandemic is over throw away your smartphones and all these laptops and all just hold the hands of your friends and run climb trees mm -hmm. you know and feel the rain falling on you so that is just another life isn't it yes yes ma'am so uh, so children i yes, feel that whatever you are be the best in your life you know i say that even if you are a helper or a sweeper then the corridor should shine like glass and somebody should ask who is who is sweeping this corridor so what my motto in life is that even if you are a cobbler even if you are anything you may be anything be the best of whatever you are and i have this poem in front of me and i have always since my childhood you know one of my teachers had read it out and it stayed with me all my life and it is by uh, not a very uh, known author or a poet but i would like to read it out to you are you interested yes ma yes ma'am yes ma'am the name the, the name of the poem itself is be the best of whatever you are you can go and watch it on youtube or you can read it but i'll read it out to you if you can't be a pine on the top of the hill be a scrub in the valley but be the best little scrub by the side of the rill rill is a stream okay be a bush if you can't be a tree if you can't be a bush be a bit of grass and some highway happier make if you can't be a musky then be a bass but the liveliest bass in the lake bass is a fish we can't all be captains we've got to be crew there is something for all of us here there is big work to do and there is lesser to do and the task you must do is near if you can't be a highway then just be a trail if you can't be the sun be a star it isn't by the size you win or you fail be the best of whatever you are isn't it wonderful 
Very nice. Ma'am, very nice. Very nice. It is so, motivating. At your level, in your age, Heart young it. age, small sizes, you know, a very small field around you. Be the best. Shine like anything. You may not be academically the, you know, the topper. but you may be a very good painter you may be a very good dancer if we all are special we all are special creations of god yes. isn't it yes ma'am so everyone ha- has a talent yes so thank you ma'am and uh, i think i have spoken enough i have not given any chance for anybody to speak much no no ma'am <laughs> It was really motivational and yes, interesting ma'am. webinar. We felt very happy. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you all you can ma'am. connect with me. Otherwise, also, if you any of you, you can. I um, mean, I'll provide Miss Aisha or uh, both the Miss Aishas actually. My email ID. I'm there on Facebook. You can connect to me any time, and you can introduce yourself. I'm from Springfield. This, 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 and I'll write to you. I write to all my children. Okay, ma'am. Okay, Thank ma'am. you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for inviting all of us with your kind presence and motivation. Hope everyone has got delighted with it. Now, uh, I would Thank like so to much. call. Thank you so much. I'm just being myself. <laughs> Principal, Miss Humaira Heather, ma'am, working with whom has always been so wonderful, and it has been a learning and a relearning process. you over to you humera ma'am uh good morning everyone and a very good morning to our special guest today ms anju roy it was a very good morning ma'am motivational session uh, given by you and all my kids really enjoyed your session today uh Thank when so we much. looked at the topic it looked like you know it is only for uh, grown ups or uh, you know teachers and leaders but it is not so you know the small steps we take right from this age as students if they start taking these steps they will go a long way and they will be the nation building uh, you know warriors for our nation and uh, to my children what i can say is such a nice message um, ma'am has shared to be humble to do your effort and you know to do your best you mean need, need not have you know excellent skills or you may not have uh, expertise in certain things but in your little small way you can do wonders you don't think uh, you know sometimes just a small smile just a hug to this these people who are not uh, you know literate if you just you know help them in some way or the other definitely you know you will be rewarded as our uh, motto says faith and good deeds you do good and that good comes back to you so ma'am it was really really wonderful hearing from you and we would like to connect to you and your school also later let the children also connect so that you know this technology has now you know bring down the barriers <laughs> earlier it was very difficult to connect to people but now you know it's just uh, with a click of the button we are able to connect to each other it was a wonderful Absolutely. session ma'am we would like to get back to you again for another session for my children i can Thank say you, that ma'am. given the right opportunities given the right upon opportunities you can excel definitely you are opportunity you know you have the opportunity your parents have admitted you to a good school you have to be grateful for that and you have to create this awareness what you learned today from ma'am right now what you have heard and what small acts of kindness you are doing your gratitude what you are doing to, today in school with small uh, you know steps definitely there they, this will be a, you know you will carry this long way along with you and uh, as uh, you know before i end i would like to say literacy is a bridge from misery to hope this was said by none other than kofi annan who is was the former secretary of un it's not about being perfect it is about the effort you put in so that you have to be uh, you know careful about and be humble as ma'am said and uh, you are being given the opportunity right now so carry this and uh, see that you stay strong and be connected and you know work towards this literacy as as ma'am said you know 
literacy is something once you are literate nobody can take away your uh, you know knowledge from you nobody can take away your knowledge from you you may lose i always say this in my uh, speeches that you may lose your bank balance you may you lose your uh, house in floods or anything but what remains with you is your education your literacy so you need to you know spread this this is a, a gift from uh, almighty which was given to you which was granted to you and you know he has created this opportunity that you are studying in school so now it's your your role starts here now how will you help others how will you you know educate others how will you make create this awareness among everybody so ma'am it was a really a wonderful session connecting with you i have uh, been so fortunate much. that i have uh, uh, one I of the persons Aisha, Aisha Sultana, who has been connecting with you, and we could invite you for the Glendale uh, Fest also. So it was Thank a wonderful so hearing from you. And uh, highly, uh, highly honored. On. I'm highly honored. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we will carry on this relationship, and uh, we will get back Definitely. to you for another session with our teachers or and our uh, students also. We will collect the topics, and in case you are able to connect with us, we will be really fortunate to do that. Thank you once sure, again, ma'am. Ma thank you. You're most welcome, ma'am. And actually, I'm developing a bond with you all. It's a kind of I've warmed up to this relationship, you know. And I shall really look forward to this. I'm always available. Uh, I, I mean, time can always be made for such relations, isn't it? Yes, sure, and inshallah, let's see. I mean, one day maybe I'll visit Hyderabad. I have relatives there. I'm also a Telugu-speaking person, and uh, so yeah, we'll I have. Invite I have you here. We'll surely invite you here. <laughs> You'll be a special Thank invite so for our uh, guests for our school. Uh, you can always come. You are always the doors are always open for you, and you can Thank always you so visit much, us. Uh, Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks for, a lot. Uh, Thanks a lot time. once again. Yeah. Okay. I know how Bye -bye. busy principals are, but you have taken up time from your busy schedule to. No, give us okay, ma'am. Always available for you. And uh, thank you once again, children. And uh, bye bye. Thank you, Miss Aishas. Both the Aishas. <laughs> thank you very much, Mara, ma'am. Now I would like to call Tefi Munisa, the cultural secretary from class 10, uh, to give a vote of thanks. I have been thanked enough, I think. <laughs> <laughs> A very good afternoon to respected principal, our spring guests, teachers, and my fellow friends. On behalf of the Springfield School, I, Tehfeen, would like to extend my gratitude to our spring guest, who has taken out time from her busy schedule and joined us. Well, these kind of events are really beneficial for us. So thank you so much, Pam, for sharing your extensive knowledge on the topic with us. It's very overwhelming to be a part of such events and we thank Humaira ma'am and our teachers who organized such an informative event. And ma'am, we really look forward to have more such sessions with you. Hope to see you very soon. Thank you. Sure, definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank so you. We so we'll sign off now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Most welcome. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Ma Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Bye. Thank you, ma'am.